Hello, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard work time. We're both What's sick wrong, today. man? Uh, we're both sick today. Are you still feel, sick? No, I feel great. You're back. I'm not. No, I still have something in my throat. But okay. the fact that you're sick, just perfect karmic retribution, right? <gasps> Lifts me, you lift you, me you, up. Which which God did you pray to to for my downfall? Oh, uh, this one. This was uh, Z- 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 Zoroastroism. Um, <laughs> I went deep. I went deep. You got a you got a, uh, a what is it called? Not a whoopee cushion. What's the vo- oh voodoo doll? You got a voodoo <laughs> doll? Man? No, but yours would be a whoopee cushion. <laughs> <laughs> a whoopee right. doll of your boy. <laughs> <laughs> Every time any of you at home listening, if you stab a whoopee cushion, I feel it. It's, oh, that's why you have IBS or whatever you got. <laughs> um, today's a big day for hard lore. Yeah, we announced the merch on the online. This, online. I guess we'll start with that, huh? Yeah. So what, what's cool about it is this episode, like it'll be th- it'll be somebody's cooking their turkey. right No, now, we're going to put this up this. a day early as a special as a treat on Wednesday. Yeah. Why? Because uh, Thanksgiving Day, everybody's with their families. They're tri- they're doing stuff. They get to have this a day early as a treat. Well, either way, they might be overnight brining their turkey. That is pre- for sure. Preparing things. So. Good call. Love of Thanksgiving. What are you doing for Thanksgiving? I'm going to Texas. Oh, right in, on. I'm going. To, I'm flying to Texas in 48 hours. This sick, dude. I'm a murderer. Okay, you, so, do you think you got sick from the show, the the pay per view, or the flight? Let me tell or, you. Or all. I don't, I don't think it was the show. I don't think so either. The day after I went to the Fleshwater Koyo show, and I did some work for Day's Media Group that you'll see very soon. Um, and, and then I did karaoke after. I think it was the karaoke. Uh. I did a Billy Joel song on Long Island, though, so that's like, you know. Just out of work. Um, and then I, the ne- and then I woke up Saturday morning. You know that feeling where you're like, "Oh, it's about to be brutal." Where your your eyelids are kind of hot on your eyeballs, and you just feel your you body just feel it. Oh my up. god! That was the third day of TwitchCon. I didn't. I slept until seven p.m. Pacific. See, you're lucky though in the in the you're in the like I'm sick so I'm going to sleep thing. Yeah. And my whole sick side effect generally is that I can't sleep. Oh, really? So I've slept about 3 hours. That's good. Here. That's definitely what what the doctor ordered. It's keeping me keeping me nice and sick. How was the uh the God's Hate show? God's Hate King 9. It was awesome. De- exceeded expectations, I would say. Can't ask for anything better. Nearly sold out. Perfect well, I guess you, lineup. I guess you could ask for a little better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, can, with all the factors considered, like the youth of today was next door. You know? So crazy. Yeah. And their show was crazy. So, like, it's a great night for in, in New York City, baby. So I almost went, and I wonder, I if wonder it where been I would have sold out if you if were I, there. I, well, obviously, it would have sold out if I was. I mean, come on. What were you about to say, you son of a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I would have been over. Uh, at the Youth of Today show. Never seen him in a small venue. It was like 800 cap. Small enough. You know what I mean? You would have watched, if we played at the same times, you would, if we counter programmed, you would have took no, bec- no, because of all things considered, no, I wouldn't have. Mm-hmm. But I would have thought about it. Okay. I would have really thought about it. Let's, um, let's talk about the hardware Happy Meal. Yeah, let's, yeah, exactly. So, so for, for those of you who haven't seen, yeah. Are you pulling it up behind I'm going to pull it up, which You're you know genius. what that means. You're a prof- <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, hold on. He's not ready. If you're listening, yeah. Bo is, his finger is uh, up his own ass right now. He's spinning around, and that's why it always excites me. But uh, <laughs> there he is. He's little. And now we see the Hard Lore Happy Meal created by myself and Miss, Mrs. Brittany Miller. Merch God. That's a, cus- that's a custom-made Hard Lore Happy Meal box. Ma- many people, I was concerned people would look at that and think, the box probably isn't part of it. No, the box is part of it. It's part of it. And then the shirt, the it's Hard Lore Time Watch, BPA-free water bottle, sticker pack, koozie, pin pack, 
Them, oh, the stickers and the pins and the koozie are just for the box. You can't get them outside the box. Separately, but the rest right. of the stuff you can buy. You can get it a la carte, but it's going to be more expensive. That's right. There's a hat, too. The the box deal, we are, like, losing money, basically, you know? So I obviously but buy it separate. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I want everybody to have the box, you know? because uh, it's The box is sick and most likely to never happen again. Yeah. So true. if you like it. Get it before we inevitably get cease and desist. It, I would say. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. But this episode is part two of the 30th episode Q&A extravaganza. So this is week 31. The performance of that last one, let me tell you. Did really well. <laughs> Should do this every week. Yeah, straight up. Um, but it's good because we didn't get to finish last time. We could talk about this without yeah. like a guest just being like, okay, what are you guys? Okay, cool. Cool, what thanks. About me. Um, and Colin's a little sick baby mm-hmm. um, and a bastard man. So we can Both kind of tell, tell him what the keep honking bumper sticker says. It says, keep honking. One. I'm listening to hard lore and trying to pick up the fry I dropped between my seats. It, used, it, was, it was way longer, but it wouldn't fit. But it was way funny. <laughs> it, it was, was like, like center console. It was like, I'm trying to reach the f- fry I dropped between my center console and my passenger seat, and I'm having some trouble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to ask you something, Bo, before we Hit get me started. with it. Hit me with it. I want you, since karma came for me, right? Yeah. I want oh you God. to come for me. Thank God. Yeah. I want you to say something mean about me. But that's not in my nature. I want you to, but it's why I want. Sometimes I'm sure you feel something and you go, I shouldn't say that. But sometimes I think that and I say, Bo, do you mind if I say this? <laughs> it's just not in my nature. It's what like, do you got it's for like, me? it's like asking um, you to do just like something nice for someone. It's just wow. like, no, it, that's not okay. It's not what you do. Sure. You know, there you you're go. a bastard man. There you go. You did it in a reverse way. I feel Same. like. When you know I do nice for things for people all day, so you know yeah. that that's not you're you're letting me go to AFI, and that's very nice. Yeah, and I just let you in on my future. Your, I mean, it's it's our. It's the brand is ours, but the, yeah, you guys need to. Well, I'm not going to say anything. But don't even don't know. even go anymore. Colin <laughs> thought of an idea that is you'll know in like a year, maybe. about a year from now. Yeah, mark it on your calendars. <laughs> Um, pretty unbelievable. About a year from now, I'll be using a fucking red epic to shoot this podcast. Basically, no, straight up, I'll be I'll be <laughs> recording from my Tesla with my winnings. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right, you got Instagram pulled up. Yeah, I got. Is there anything up. else we should catch up about? How was the pay per view? Oh, amazing! Yeah, it seemed it seemed like a really good one. It was the the the, the card was great. Yep, vibes were off the charts. It started with the Danhausen pushing tugs thing, so that was like really special, like right off the bat. Absolutely, uh, got to do. I went there for Knotfest, so shout out to Knotfest who made that happen and makes this podcast happen every mm. week, man. Just because they like hardcore and want it to work, not nice. It's so nice. All right, first one. <laughs> this is funny as the first one, but. Uh, Favorite Disney Channel original movie? I didn't have Disney Channel growing up. You never saw Brink? Never. So this was always like a thing with with me and Casey, my mm-hmm. ex girlfriend. Was she was Disney Channel kid? And I was like only Nickelodeon. Never had I, Disney. So Channel. I was too. I I didn't fuck with Disney Channel until way later, and somebody would have to be like, "Hey, have you seen this?" Yeah, I just and met. I didn't see many of them, but I saw I think Brink and uh, and Smart House, which somebody said they liked. Brink is the, is the one that I think was like actually kind of good. And it probably sucks shit now, but <laughs> which one is Brink? It's like an extreme rollerblading movie. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Just never had it. Just yeah. didn't wasn't around. It's all right. Colin, did you ever ask your wife about the Skinwalkers? Yeah, she thought I was fucking crazy. PS, what's your Wiener Schnitzel order? Dude, do you know Tried going to the Wiener Schnitzel the first time we were ever in LA because of fucking the descendants, you know, just like, I don't, we don't know what it is. Um, the line was so long, just didn't go, never. That, which is crazy because that's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I'll tell you who's a, who's a Wiener Schnitzel mark, Brody King. 
Really? It's like his number two all time. Wow. It's like in and out wiener schnitzel. What do they got? Like, what's like the thing there? Wiener schnitzels. <laughs> I don't know. How else <laughs> well, what, right. what even is what Wieners, is that? It's just a just hot like dog. A, just a fried hot dog. Hot dog? Oh, okay. I don't even think they have the schnitzel aspect. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Uh, I often. This is a good one. I often see on social media bands visiting places like Stonehenge in the Australia Zoo. What yeah. are some famous landmarks that are a must see on a HXC world tour? Oh, that's a great great question. question. Um. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Banff. In Canada is really outstanding. What the Very fuck incredible. is that? It's a it's like a national park. They have hot springs. Um, it's like a, if you were to make a movie about like a ski town and there's like a murder mystery, uh. you would film it there and it would be perfect. This see what you whatever advice you probably have for this is probably advice for me as well because I was in the lay down S- and chill yes, band. Stay at, yeah yeah we we always go out. Um, Walking around London is great. Never been to Stonehenge. Walking around Paris is like actually. We yeah. had the, we had a, a truly monumental day in Paris. Today. <laughs> that was probably the first. Like, <sighs> Paris uh, checks off a lot of back boxes that I don't like, but the the few that I do like are like I don't think you can find anywhere else. Like every yeah. you look down any direction, it looks like a movie. Everything is super like nice and romantic, even though it's like graffiti and dirty. It's like yeah. still it's it's kind of it's kind of like New York, you know. It's kinda, grimy, but it's yeah. beautiful. Uh, but specifically landmarks. Um, Let me tell you where you got to go in Paris. This is gonna sound insane. Mm. The Abercrombie and Fitch store, dude. I have tried to because we went there together. I have tried to explain that to people. They don't get it. Guys, okay, this is insane. It you, can't, just, you can't take pics. It's very you special. You corked a memory. Yeah. So it's it's a mansion. Mm-hmm. You, you're like walking on the main rue to, to, for shopping and shit, and it's the one that ends at the Arc, Arc de Triomphe or yeah. whatever. But you, you go in, and it's like a hedge-lined walkway on gravel, and then you walk into this mansion. Well, right out front is the sexiest man you've ever seen. Ever, with, with ever. With no shirt on. Yeah. Being like, yeah, Chanel, Chanel, yeah. you know, or, but in France. <laughs> I don't think in it's French. there anymore, by the way, because I've the been to store? Paris. Yeah, I've been to Paris since, Whoa. and I've tried looking for it to, like, show how insane it is, and wow. I haven't been able to find it. Um but you walk in and it's like an open floor plan. Like, you know how like an embassy suites hotel is where it's like all open on the inside. Yeah. And the rooms like lying. It looks like, like look the down. Hogwarts moving yeah. stairs. Exactly. But and there's people store. without shirts on dancing, dancing to techno. Just like. And if you try to take pictures, they'll like They're watch like, no. you delete it. Yeah. You and, can't. And, uh, yep can't document it. I had a video of me filming someone and a guy being like, no, no, no camera. Like, but it's on an old phone or whatever. But that was crazy. Um, Australia, the, like the harbor is super nice. The jump spot in the harbor is fucking amazing. We always go there. Yes. The, um, the koala pine reservation place. in yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a staple. He, he brought that. He said the Australia zoo, but there's two places. There's the kangaroo sanctuary and the koala sanctuary. The koala one's the one where you can get in for being in a band. So we've been there three out of three times, right? Japan, everywhere you go is a landmark. Every corner is something sick. Every vending machine. You're like, yo, do you have a, a, do you have a favorite though? Like a place where you're like, this is just like awesome. Like, did, is, in does anything, Japan? No, no, no. In general, anywhere. I, I okay. I, I mean, I really like New York City. It makes me feel good. You know, I get to have my little main character moment every day, where I'm getting I'm getting on the L, onto the O, into the <laughs> P. You know, yeah, yeah. into the to the Q, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Uh. And I, I love, I mean, anywhere in Japan, like the Osaka Temple, I, anywhere I can buy stuff, I'm like having the best time. Dude. You know this about me. Have you ever been to Epcot Center? Never. I've never been to World. <laughs> okay. So they have a, like, there's like, two, it's either 12 or 14 different countries that surround this lake. Right. 
And when you go there, they have shit you can only, literally only get in Japan, in Germany, in England, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they have people who are working there who are, like, German. Oh, wow. And who are Japanese and who are from Mexico. Like, and uh, they got, the last a, they time got I, a, a red light district at Epcot. <laughs> yeah, the, the Amsterdam. Can you the, but the last, the last time I went there, the Japan area was like incredible. Had all the shit from Japan. Wow. Disc so Union? Fun. They got a disc union there? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That'd it be didn't, sick. didn't fucking, stay long enough. Yeah, you can go to Epcot, find a medium sheer terror shirt. <laughs> 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 Sick. All right, what's next here? I, I also look. really like... I'm sorry to interrupt again, but I also really like... I don't like Berlin, mm -hmm. but I, I like... like I like, like, parts of it. Like, I like going to the Brandenburg Gate and, like, just looking at all the embassies and thinking of, like, what this was like in the 60s, you know, Yo, like stuff like Berlin, that. in Berlin one time, I got bamboozled so fucking bad by this, like, street gambling guy. Really? He fucked me. What'd he do? I had like 100 euros. And I was like, this is so easy. <laughs> and what he does, it, he rigs it. Because he's doing the like, which hand is the dice in type thing. Yeah, of you course. Know? Yeah. And there's three people with me who are like getting it right. And he's giving them money. Mm -hmm. But they're with him. So All I'm right. watching it and I'm like, this is so easy. These guys keep winning. How can I lose? Yeah. So I do it and I win. And I'm like, I'm staying. That's and then I lose 100, 100 euros. And then Classic. when you're walking away, they're like, no, 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 come on. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They fuck me. Classic. Crush me, man. Wow. Uh, if you had to shit without your phone, what would you do instead? It's read a great the question. Read the shampoo bottle. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've been known. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the he ate without YouTube meme, the, like, the yeah. guy being like carted off to the hospital. It was like, yeah. what happened to him? That's me for real. Oh, a major development for me in my bathroom. I have a heated bidet now. Wow. Isn't that huge? It's great. How long do you sit there with that stream just firing up the hole? <sighs> Longer than I thought I would. Oh, it's the best. I'll tell you what, though. It took, <laughs> it takes a long time for the hot water to, to get going. That's on your plumbing, though. That's not yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But then uh, I let it go too long, and I, I got a little. You burned your arsehole. <laughs> kind of a little bit, I think. I'll tell you what it's done for me. It's it's kind of cursed me. Because now when I'm away from home for mm. one day, my mm. ass is bleeding. First time I wipe with single ply, I'm done for. <laughs> Just too sensitive. Any less than two, and I'm actually like, it's like your little little snowflake. It's half blood. Little chocolate snowflake. I'm a little princess. I'm a little poopy yeah. princess, man. Give me a break. <laughs> uh, best worst place you've done a number three on the road. Also, if Bo doesn't do white sauce, does that include lotion? Uh, well, I don't. I don't eat lotion uh, typically. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number three. Is that throwing up? Yeah, I guess is that all three? I don't know what that is. Number three, I think, is throwing up. You think that's throwing up? One is PP. -pee. Have you ever Two puked on stage? Oh, absolutely. Really? Master killer in Europe. It was like day one or two of tour. I was like, yeah, let's just do, let's throw Master Killer on. They want one more. And it was like, in time, my <coughs> full on like Taylor Young style. Did, did you project? Oh, big time. Wow. The worst, I mean, I told it on Hard Lord before, but the worst vomit I've ever done is. On the Harry Potter ride. Gnarly. Shut the fucking whole thing down. I've never puked um, on stage. I've never had an incident. Why would you, though? You know? Knock on wood. Well, just eating, and I jump around a lot. And I do do some backups, you know, and that is the kind of yeah, guttural. Yeah, you do do, for sure. You know, but yeah. I've been fine. Sure. Closest moment to breaking edge. Wow. Wow. You got that? I mean, not, well, do you even think about watching it? Watching Mad Men. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, watching the Sopranos and just wanting wine. <laughs> My closest moment to breaking edge is seeing a man smoke a cigarette. <laughs> In general. But then you yeah. smell. So oh, I man. definitely was like was was uh bamboozled by by Sigs again being like damn these guys look so fucking cool. Mm -hmm. And then you smell them for one second and you're like oh you're you're a piece of shit. My mom used to chain smoke in the house. Same. Just constant. So like that smell equals like 
weird home nostalgia and then my mom. So the like worst, I, but, but like the bad yeah. kind. Where you're the like, bad kind, yeah, because leave. it's ex- exactly. So if I meet someone and they smell like that, it's like, oh, it's just like a yeah, strange. Happy to say she's quit and she's been she's been good. Yeah, my dad just smokes hella weed now. <laughs> um, I think if I if 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 I were to break edge, it would certainly be down the THC route. Not me. I think that smells it seems, worse than six. It seems no, 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 but not not smoking necessarily, oh. like a tincture or a edible or something like that. Seems to be like what is that word? Oh, suppository. <laughs> yeah, suppository for sure. <laughs> they got that. Just <laughs> suppository THC. That'd be I'm huge. sure they do. Huge market. Mine would probably be crack or heroin. I think. <laughs> Smoke this fucking crack with me, bro. Yeah. Uh, closest moment to breaking edge for real, though, was after my appendectomy. Really? And I had the Norco prescribed to me. Oh. With, I mean, that's first not of all, breaking edge. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. Oh. But I, I was like, I there felt are, so there are good. CBD suppositories. I felt. <laughs> how much? Forty bucks. Yeah, forty bucks. To add to cart. Uh, <laughs> But they were so good. I felt so good that I was like, okay, I get it now. You know, mm. I understand. What, that uh, when when my prescription ran out, I was like bummed. You know. Ah, uh, I see. I see. But then um, good. I have a, I have a weird thing with with um, different kinds of opiates and stuff like that, where I don't react the same. When I had my appendectomy, I woke up from the anesthesia and I was nauseous for days. Mm. Um, I've tried kratom. And for like pain relief and like inflammation, and that made me puke. I got really like nauseous and dizzy. Um, one time in Brooklyn on tour, I blew my I like threw my back out while we were playing. Chris had recently had his wisdom teeth removed and had Vicodin with him just as like it just like you've prescribed. Told me this. You told this here before, yeah. and I took half of it. Kept me up all night. That's so, so I just weird. like I don't respond. My mom. I don't the think same. your body likes him. My mom's the same way. See, for me, I haven't slept good since. I see. I took Norco and slept 14 hours. And, you, and, and like now my body has like, been chasing that ever since. Uh-huh. So it wants to, my body wants to be fat as fuck and. Sleepy. Just so addicted to sleep. <laughs> um, Colin, you mentioned that when you go number two, you get your feet all the way up into the bowl. Yes, I do. So I'll sit there and straight up. I like hate that. to say that I refuse to accept this to be reality. It's real. I, I, I my Lana bought a squatty potty, but this is my move. But you like only bigger, really do it at home. You're bigger than me. Yeah, how I'm, do you how do you fit? I'm ten times more flexible than you two. I'm, Colin, it doesn't take a fucking gymnast to put your legs up, brother. I'm it just does. Like, how do you? It does. <laughs> how do you physically fit on that seat? I got. I make it work, like Tim Gunn says. Make it work. <laughs> <laughs> that is, um, you don't find that to be strange? I do, but I find it to be effective. Most, uh, most of all, you know? Uh. Because, like, I've seen the diagram where it's like, here's what happens when you squat versus not, and it's like yeah. the the sphincter, like, getting, like, um, pinched by something. Yeah. Um, so Speaking I get of that. sphincter getting pinched by something, I'm going to try something live on the show real quick. I have a weird, like, gr- this is like caffeinated greens. As oh, a you're beverage. Gonna, you're gonna shit your brains out. Let's see what happens. I'm scared. <laughs> How is it? Ah. <coughs> it's disgusting. One down, one to go. <laughs> oh. <coughs> Oh, when I was doing keto, I used to take these powdered greens and they would make me very regular for sure. (sighs) Great. (laughs) Uh, Mount Rushmore of hardcore records. That's a good question. It's a great question. We probably have, we probably have really close, but very different. You you know what I mean? Like they're not going to be the same, but I might think they would be identical. No, I think only master killers probably. Okay. Each each of ours. So for, for me, it would be Master Killer, um, the Turning Point LP. Yeah. Uh, I guess I would put Age of Coral on there, even Age though I would. On mine for sure. I, I'd rather 
We're talking one. like yeah, but we're just talking best of the best. Not, not yeah, favorite. you know. I guess a little bit of favorite, a little bit of best is yeah. And then probably we're not in this alone. Probably. I'd probably put Master Killer, Satisfaction, mm-hmm. Age of Coral, Bright Side. Ooh. Easy. Killing Time and like the Raw Deal demo. I might do Victim of Pain over Age of Coral. But I think I would, I think right now, if I was like, do you want to listen to either or? I'd probably listen to Age of Coral. It's been a while, you know? Isn't it funny that we just listed only, like, only basically New York bands and Connecticut? Yeah, just the way Squid. it goes, you know? Oh, shit. You know what? I never fed them. Y'all ain't eating for a while. Sorry. <laughs> what is your favorite song from your most disliked band slash genre? Another good question. Easy answer for me. I have one as well. Yeah, the Deftones Diamond Eyes song I think is good. It's a great song. And it's because it's the verse is just like bam, bam, bam. hard. We did a tour, um, and and every time I die's um, tour manager slash sound guy Ben would EQ rooms to that, and when you can hear that that song like loud and EQ'd for a room, it's it's genuinely very impressive how that thing sounds in a room. That's it sounds good. I like um, it. There's a song called Little Bit of You by Chase Bryant. Is that a country song? It's like a, a but like a modern country song that just sounds like a fucking pop punk song. You hate you hate modern country? Yeah, that's not that's really not for me. Especially when it's like lips up and I'll flip Carolina. There's like rapping sometimes, you know? And it's like very much would be played on that radio station. Yeah. Do you know the song? That was funny. I was laughing, but I had it muted because I, I was blowing my nose. But. The one that's like, all I can use a little bit of your sweet kiss. Yeah, I think I've heard it because we, you and I had this conversation at some point. It's, it's an incredible song. Mm. Terrible genre. Well, there you go. Easy. That's yeah. a great, great question. Was it a deliberate decision for the vocals to sound like Odorous Arungus on the Dead Body album? No. Star Wars ranked. <sighs> this goes you, crazy. Yeah, this is this is tough. We haven't really talked about this. Are we going mo- like movies or shows too? Should we I don't know the shows, so let's just keep it to movies. You haven't. Yeah, I've, are I've, you serious? Give me a break, okay, brother. There's like 14 movies, all these goddamn Disney shows. I don't have time. You ever watched Mandalorian? I watched Mandalorian. It was good. You're a fucking loser, and I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I, I mean, I watched it, but then I started watching fucking Kenobi, and it was terrible. It's not I, the I, same. I, I and, can't. Dude, I'm and, just... Dude, Andor is going to bring you right back. That's what I've been told. It is, it is a masterpiece. That's what I've been told. Like, like the fucking Star Wars-ness aside, it's just a, a perfect, like, spy thriller. Oh, okay. And it's now, like, it's done in little arcs. So the first three episodes are a build. Four to six is a build. Seven to ten is fucking like an explosion. Oh, that's fun. Okay. And then eleven and twelve. Eleven is building to sub to the finales next week. And holy fuck, man. Oh, okay, cool. Well, if it's if the finale is last week, then I can get into it. It is because I, mean? I can unbelievable. Pitch it. Okay, but um, let's do this question. I like this. Okay. How do you feel about the last three? The newest three? Uh I think Force Awakens is like a good nostalgic movie. That's you know, seven, like, right? The yeah. first one back. It's okay. it's borderline a remake. It's fun to watch. Yeah. Han, I think the, I think the, the la- shit. Yeah, I think The Last Jedi is one of the best Star Wars movies. Okay. And obviously, Rise of Skywalker is doo doo. Doo doo poo poo. You like The Last Jedi even with the fucking casino planet bullshit? That, I mean, obviously that's not great. And that and that but- girl, Rose. I think I think she got a bad rep. I think if she could have used been used better, but I think yeah, her, yeah. the idea of her was cool. I, right, I so think I think you're you're. It's like th- those things have always kind of existed in Star Wars in some way. You know, the annoying side quests that are there for kind of a reason, but obviously the disjointedness of the three is the yeah, problem. They correct. were three different ideas that turned into one and a half ideas. And then the fucking what are the what do you call the words at the beginning? 
It's called something. The title, the scrolling text. Yeah, like right. at the beginning of the last one was just. It, I remember seeing it in the theater and people being like, "What?" Like out loud, audibly. Yo, Palpatine's speech was Fortnite exclusive. He recorded a speech that was like, "Here's why I'm back." Fortnite Fuck. exclusive. All right, so let's start it. Let's do, do you want to, we got to include Rogue One, obviously. obviously. Absolutely. And then Solo, I guess. Is that the only other sure. standalone movie? Movie, yeah. I don't really care about Solo. Yeah, either way. Yeah. It's just kind of there. So if you want to do, let's do 10, including Rogue One. Empire Strikes Back. You're going at the top? I'm going to top. I mean, you want me to go reverse? I'll go reverse. Yeah, let's go reverse. <laughs> okay, Attack of the Clones, number 10. Yeah, that's number two, right? Or yeah. is that three? That's two. It's two. Garbage. Yeah, I I agree. That's that movie is so difficult. Dude, the Django do. Fett chase thing at the beginning is one hour. <laughs> the movie just starts and it, nothing important happens. It's all like a visual th- aspect for one hour. What's uh, the third one called? Episode three, Revenge of the Sith. The first half of that is also whatever, but then <laughs> then it's fuck. unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the, there's also the end of Attack of the Clones. It's like Yoda versus Palpatine, or uh, yeah, Yoda uh, versus du- Dooku. Is Dooku, insane. yeah, it's very cool. Uh, the whole Geonosis like Coliseum thing is dope. Uh, let's see, Attack of the Clones, yeah, number ten. I'll, I agree with that. I'll probably go Phantom Menace number nine. Really? Here's even the thing. for even for nostalgia. Here's the thing, man. Yeah, you watch it again. It's rough. It's crazy. The fucking battle on Naboo. It's basically about UPS and FedEx yeah. f- running the galaxy. You know? yeah, it's right, an evil yeah. shipping company. And it's like, what child would A, know what the fuck you're talking about? <laughs> B, find it interesting. We want to see Darth Maul. And he's yeah. in three scenes. Dude. But those three what, scenes. One of the best oh. tweets I've ever read was like, you know it was on bad when when dude ghost rode his bike into a fucking mountain just to fight. Uh, what's his face? Liam Neeson. <laughs> oh, that was like, awesome. Qui Gon. Okay, so and then would you put two solo. at? I go. I go. Attack of the Clones. Phantom Solo. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I might put Solo even lower than Phantoms just because, <clears throat> just for nostalgia's sake. Because at the time, Phantom Menace was so sick. Like, I loved it when it came out. See, I, I, I remember being kind of... Dis- I was So, Phantom Menace, I think, was the first time... There was a vivid first time where I saw a movie and I thought, okay, that was bad. They make bad movies. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Which and that movie? movie was Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow. <laughs> okay. I saw it in theaters and thought, damn, bad movies are real? Like, yeah. why do they make yeah. them then? Yeah. Phantom Menace was the first time where I started to question... Career because I had only been exposed to dope shit my whole life, you know. And then that came out, and I remember thinking like that could it could it be possible that I'm missing something? Like I maybe need to see that a few more times. (laughs) And then you grow up and realize it's 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 fucking wacky. There's cool shit. Locking my cats up so they don't meow. Sorry. Um. Yeah. There's cool shit, but. Got the pod racing game. I got it right there. That was good. And 64. <laughs> the game was good. The yeah. the Phantom Menace game. It played like the Indiana Jones uh the Fate of Atlantis game. It was cool. Right. I forgot about um, that. Okay. So one what's of the greatest games? Rise of Skywalker would be next. Above solo. Or above episode three. No. Three is above Rise of Skywalker. Okay, good. And yeah. solo. Yeah. Okay. So it's right now it's Attack of the Clones 10. Let me, hold on. Just, we have this. Are we doing this? Are we making one joint list? Is that what you're trying to do? I'm mostly in agreement with you so far. Yeah, okay. Um, so what was You're going to disagree up top, I bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where all to be good. Yeah. 10, 10 was. Attack of the Clones. Attack of Clone. And then Phantom. This would be, this would be 11 movies, I believe, also. Uh, you're right. Okay. So then this would be Solo, right? Yeah. And. Go on. So 11 attack, 10 phantoms, 9 solo, 8 rise of Sky- Skywalker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was the last one, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Garbaggio. <laughs> Revenge of the Sith, probably right here. Yeah, because okay. now you're getting in. Yeah, getting into the the, the goats. You know, yeah, actual goats. Um, I probably have Force Awakens right here. That's fair. <sighs> <laughs> Now it's dicey. <laughs> so now you got four, five, and six, and Rogue One. Rogue One. New Hope, number four. Wait, wh- why am I missing one? Wait, are you? Are there five left? Yeah, there's five left. We're New Hope, one. number five. Okay. Watching it back, not easy. New Hope, not easy. There's some. There's I some. Think just it's a, like it's a. It's obviously a technical, creative marvel. Yeah. You know. And it it is the source of all this, but they made better movies. Oh yeah, they, it, what it was crazy is New Hope was nominated for every Oscar. Really, Empire Strikes Back was nominated for like visual effects only. Wow, when it's so objectively better, you know. Yeah, but also George Lucas, I think, had to leave the Directors Guild. Because of the op- the opening credits of Star Wars not being opening credits, he was like booted for the from the Directors Guild for not. There's some kind of lore there. I don't know. This ain't that's not the name of the show. No. Uh, <laughs> Wait, we have Rise of Skywalker, Force Awakens. What's the other one? The Last, last Jedi. Sh- last Jedi. Number four. Okay. Really? So yeah, I, I would disagree with you there for yeah, sure. I love. I did. I did not enjoy that. Okay. I love it. I think if you watch it again with your boy. I have. I have. Oh, well, yeah, okay. With your boy. Where I can pause it and go, here's why this is good. No, where would you put four, five, and six? Or I'm sorry, Rogue One, five, five and six. Five, six, Rogue One. I'll probably go Jedi, three. Yeah, yeah, and then Rogue. Rogue yeah. One, Yeah. Empire. Yeah. So I agree with the whole list minus Last Jedi and... Uh, I I would just put that down. I I put I think, Force Awakens. I think there. today, if you watched both of those movies back to back, you would tell me that the Last Jedi is a better movie than A New Hope. I mean, I I've probably watched it eight months ago. You know, today, <laughs> back to back. That's the thing. Four to eight. You ain't never done that. I'll tell you that much. Hmm. You would tell me. That's my list. But above all of that. Is Mandalorian really? And, and right next to it is Andor. Mandalorian wouldn't have been shit if it wasn't for the end of the second season. You're an it idiot. Just, it just Anna. would have been like you're a cool a, show, but it wouldn't have meant asshole. anything. That's not would, true. It absolutely it is, is true. Absolutely incorrect. You don't I think shit. it's a good show. I popped for the end. I cried. Love. You don't. You didn't. You don't know shit. Okay. But it, it just would have been a show if you, not for that. You part. are listen. You've you've tread dangerous grounds before with me, but you ain't <laughs> never been you ain't never been in quicksand, brother. We should do at a later second. time. We should do this with like Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, the other big ones. <laughs> Fire it up, brother! Let's go. <laughs> Fire it up. Well, new document. Hit it. You want a new one right now? Yes. All right. Uh, Lord of the Rings. That's just one through six. <laughs> which, which is funny because it's kind of. I'm including the Hobbit with it, obviously. Which is stupid, you know. Yeah. Hobbit two bottom. Yeah. Hobbit yeah, three yeah. second bottom. Yeah. Hobbit <laughs> one Hobbit. third bottom. <laughs> uh, it's so hard because. But I got it. I got it. It's right. two towers three. Return to fellowship. Fellowship? Yeah. yeah, I would disagree with that. Dude, but fel- look, what, fellowship is the most rewatchable thing maybe ever. You know? Which one yeah. have you seen the most? Return of the King. Really? I love Return of the King. Okay. I mean, I do too. That's the thing. These, this is a hard three. Yeah. When when the Rokirum shows up at Minas Tirith. I'm with you. Yeah, this he, this isn't he, a matter of gold, silver, bronze. This is no, a matter of platinum, platinum. This is platinum. yeah. This is yeah. diamond, platinum, gold. You yeah, know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he does the fucking ride, ride now. Yeah. Fourth. I need to get. I've been trying. I've been wanting to get the fucking Narsil on my wall over here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I gotta just do it. 
Yeah, you got to do it. got to just do it. But I'm going to reorganize this whole thing soon. I fucking love it. Let's do movies. Harry Potter. That's way harder. Uh, yeah, it's way harder. How many are there? How many movies? There's nine eight, movies. Eight right? movies. We're not counting Fantastic Beasts. No, but I thought there was like a... Like no, there's eight, seven eight. books and then a part two. Okay, gotcha. Eight is uh, Order of the Phoenix. Think about it. I guess it has to be, huh? Dolores Umbridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's such a fucking piece of shit villain that it makes the movie hard to watch. Yeah. She's so hateful and vile that the movie is bad because of it. And it, that, like, that's a testament to how good the performance is, you know? Right, yeah. Right. I mean that as nothing but a compliment. I would then probably put Deathly Hollows. Deathly Hollows 1? That's 6 and 7. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Oh, I think you're smoking that good, good crack, dude. I just um. You got to hold to the wrong stuff. Well, <laughs> <laughs> my theory is it's casting a shadow, shadow from, from the other limb. Other limb. <laughs> I uh, the part with with Dobby was one of the most difficult things for me to ever watch. Wow. Like no joke, I, I it fucked me. I would put one. As a seven. No, I really would. No, I probably would. I'd put Deathly Hallows 1 as seven. You think yeah. Deathly Hallows, you think all the rest of the movies are better than, like, genuinely better movies than Deathly Hallows Part 2? Um, maybe not, like, Chamber of Secrets. Chamber of Secrets goes hard. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. But that's, like, the only one. Because I'm thinking, like, God Directed dude, by your boy. Christopher Columbus. Chris Columbus. Um, Birth name, Chris. <laughs> Not even Christopher. There's, it's not shortened. It's just Chris. Christoph. Um, <laughs> did you like that message this morning? What did I say with it? Yeah, I don't know. Some fucking bullshit. I posted. The, I sent him the screenshot and just said, "Die." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but man. what I was gonna say is, "Goblet of Fire" is when it gets serious. Yeah, it's the tone. I of love shit. that. That's the yeah. That's the paradigm shift, and I like. Well, that. I will say, Azkaban ain't Azkaban is. I mean, we're we'll get there. Yeah, I mean that's number one, right? That's number one, easy we know number one. We know that's it's objectively the best movie, you know. Yeah, just put it in there. Yeah, it's in there. number two is Sorcerer's Stone, right? Dude, yeah, absolutely. Philosopher's Stone. Yeah, yeah. They think we're so fucking stupid. Sorcerers. That we couldn't say, like, Americans don't know what a philosopher, philosopher is. is. yeah. They know sorcerers and magic. These fucking losers. Crazy. So what Three we got, we would be... Goblet Chamber, Deathly 2, and then the half I would put Deathly 2 at 3, but that's just me. Because that's... I will say, dude, that when uh, Molly Weasley... Whew, whew, that That is a part. Yeah. All right. The whole movie is a war. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's sick. And I love the, like, have you seen uh, uh, Voldemort laughing in other languages, like on TikTok? No. It'll be overdubs from other languages, and it'll be like, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be like German. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then we got Goblet. Goblet's or, uh, next. Goblet's next. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goblet. And then it's got to be I Chamber. Put ch- I put and Chamber. Then Half-Blood. Yeah. Then Half Blood for sure. Half Blood is cool because we I'm learned about the Half Blood yeah. Prince. Obviously. <laughs> Good list. Yeah. Great list. That was that fun. Was fun. <laughs> I'll do this anytime. Now, now, how about this, Colin? Even with the bullshit Hobbit movies, rank series Star Wars, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Indiana Jones, Back to the Future. Damn. Yeah, right? Star Wars is number one for me. Star Wars number one. With a bullet. I don't have two fucking yeah, Lord yeah. of the Rings swords on my thing over here, you know? Uh, but you could. You really could. I could. I want one. I want. I would want. I want Sting and Narsal, yeah. you know? So that I could easily have two. And Lord uh, of the Rings takes it for me. I know that. You're a big fantasy guy, though. You're a little elf, elf. You think elves are so sexy, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, dude. I get it. Me too. <laughs> um, it 
it's funny to go from this to what was the gnarliest shit you took on tour? <laughs> I don't. I'm. I'm. I'm very blessed with my my colon. I guess I. I don't. I don't often have problems on tour. Mm. I just don't. I'm. I'm the kind of guy where I get a coffee and then within an hour it's I'm ready to go and it's great. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy, man. <laughs> my answer is a little different. <laughs> As I've said on the show before. I've never left Dinosaur Barbecue with my underwear. That's just a fact. And I've been there probably five times. That's so insane. I've never left the building without touching cotton. You know? I have, uh, well, Warp Tour. I had to shit on top of like a pile of shit because it's all porta potties also. Oh, well, of course. So it's, you know, but it, we're, this is when it was piled over the seat. So I just had to like stand. Bad. Really bad. It's hot. Can, let me, can I, I got a, I forgot I had to print a retraction for something real quick. So at full gear, I ran into Tom Sheehan, friend of the show, mm -hmm. host of Extra Grind. Mm -hmm. He damn near broke my heart. Let me tell you why. Uh oh. He was listening to an episode where I said that the, the live Extra Grind was like a bad idea because it was three podcasts back to back. And he was like genuinely hurt, thinking that I would, I would be smirch, extra grind, and oh. or Tom, Tom, live on the show. <laughs> You're my special boy, okay? <laughs> Wait, I love Tom. I'm talking to Tom, but you are my number one boy, okay? Okay, okay. You're my number one special boy, okay? <laughs> okay. Tom, Tom, let, let me just go through the extra grind panel real quick. Tom Sheehan, yeah, day one. Twitching Tongues guy, you know? Great. A very vocal supporter right off the bat. Would never be smirching. Pat Kinlan. Get, the 25-minute the, the interview I did with him for NotFest is probably the actual reason this podcast exists. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boom. He told me to never wear shorts again. I never did. Three, Bob Shedd. A, a Strange Notes Colin Young supporter since I was 14 years old. An original champion of my creative endeavors. So for the record, hard lore. There's no hard lore without extra grind. There's no, yeah. There's no me without those three guys, basically. Huh. Interesting. I didn't even take away that sentiment from what It broke said. his heart, and that broke my heart. Oh, and I no. just kept texting him after Tom. I can't believe you would think I would do that to you. No, yeah. No, no. So no. I just had to clear that up real quick. Tom is my special boy. <laughs> Love him. What's the best thing you've won during McDonald's Monopoly? Fucking fry or something? Dude. I've never won shit. Why man. not us, man? This kid, Victor Upton, I went to school with. <laughs> Sorry for doxing you, Victor. <laughs> They're going to come for your PSP now. But he you won a PSP? PSP. I would, that was, that's the most envious of anything I've ever been in my life. Have you ever told my Starburst story? On the show? Tell me the Starburst story, Bo. They did a thing when I was in grade school where it was um, in every pack of Starburst, there was a um, question mark wrapped mystery flavor. Oh, right. And Dude, yet, you yeah. got the thing? So I guessed that it was plum. And I got a letter back that was like, congratulations, you won a free pack of Starburst. Like, come on. That's it? That's what I got. You must have been like the second guy then. Because I think the winner got like 25,000 bucks. I think it was 50 grand. <laughs> so, runner up, 25,000. Third runner up, pack of Star Wars. Pack of Star I mean, <laughs> you're not fucked. going home empty handed, brother. Well, yeah, brutal. That's fucked, man. Brutal. Yeah, I never won good. Uh, wish I did. This one for both of you. Did you ever get into Woods of Ypres? Or were they too much of a shitty type of worship band? Okay, I wouldn't call him that. The guy literally passed away. Oh, really? Yeah, he's he. he I think he died in a car accident or something. Oh, they man. were like the most typo sound like band, and there was definitely for that. That was the reason why I was like, yeah, I'm not sure this is for me. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, man, I downloaded every single one of them records and listened to every single one of them songs, looking for something, and then like the guy just tragically died. Wow. Yeah, I think it was like a solo project or just the main guy. Is it spelled Y-P-R-E-S? Yes. Eper. 
That's a uh, major major battlefield in Belgium. Woods of Ypres. Men, Ypres. men drowned in mud. Which, by the way, did you watch uh, All Quiet on the Western Front? Not did yet. You? Is it dope? Pretty fucking good, yeah. You liked it? Yeah, yeah I did. Mm. This was good. Uh, Bo talks of having an eight to five. My question is, when does a band know it's safe to quit their jobs and live off making music? Uh, merch money and does all that money get split between band members, their label, etc.? And if Colin could retell the Sorcerer's Pledge story involving Brody King, that would be great. Oh, I don't even know if I know that story. Um, I would say don't ever quit your job. No. Like this if you like can, if you can unsafe. make it both happen. Yeah. Make it both happen until you literally cannot. Yeah. I had a job that I worked at for like six or seven years until I had to quit for Warp Tour. There was just like way too much at once. They couldn't do it. Right. You know what I mean? And everyone else in my band has a job. Like to this day, right? Yeah. yeah. And you have There's, a job. Yeah, Everybody I have has a job. job. It's just uh, like... There are very few bands within our world who can live solely off the band. Very few. It's very true. And uh, otherwise, you're just you're you're touring all the all the time. Yeah, neither of us are in one of those bands. So, yeah, and I don't want to tour all the time. So, and when it comes, guess what we did? (laughs) Started a podcast. We started a podcast. That's Uh, when it comes to. I would say most bands aren't aren't doing anything with their label when it comes to merch. Yeah. Um, and it depends Other on the Other than setup. the two shirts that they get for the pre-order or whatever. And that's just it, to recoup. It depends on the setup of the band, of how they split money and how they do stuff. You know, it, yeah. typically you're paying off a lot of merch debt before you're splitting anything. Big time. And that's like, so think about this. Think, think about this math, listener. Yeah. You see a, sh- a band selling a shirt for 25 bucks. You're bummed about it. You're like, holy shit, 25, that's getting high. Even 30 in God's Hate's case because we like big, colorful stuff mm-hmm. and nice brands and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's six people in the band. It costs, at this point, with screens and everything, 12 to $15 to make. You know? Shirts ain't $4 anymore. Yeah. So the multi, the five, six, seven color shirts are expensive to make. So let's say every shirt, the profit margin is 15 bucks. Divide that by six, and then add shipping and stuff. Uh, add shipping. Add any leftover merch bills from the previous time that that you're just riding up. We're like, not making shit. Post Malone shirts are eighty dollars for a reason. You know. Yeah, yeah. So look out for eighty dollars hardly. <laughs> you heard it here first. Uh, can you guys weigh in on your thoughts? Oh, the Brody King Sorcerer's Pledge. Thing. Oh yeah, right? yeah. What what is that? I had a little solo project called Sorcerer's Pledge. It came out in 2012. I did a demo tape and I wrote an LP. Uh, I tried to shop the LP around. Didn't really have much interest. Recorded like really bad demos of it that are no, that don't exist. I don't even have them anymore, Hmm. but the songs kind of ended up dissected amongst twitching tongues, gaining purpose, uh, God's hate mass murder and some other stuff. Like they're all there. The, 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 the parts are out there. Um, And I thought about, I hit Martine up about maybe opening for Candlemas when they played here, and he thought it was a cool idea. So I said something on Twitter like, "I think Sorcerer's Pledge maybe we'll finally play a show because I like those first three songs are the first three songs that like only I wrote. You know, I didn't have any help. It was just a gotcha. thing I made." Um, and he responded with a GIF of Anna from Frozen singing. Let it go. Oh. And I never have talked about it since. It was like, all right, I'm done. This man, this man just bully kinged me into never talking about this band again. Oh. <laughs> it's so I'm, good. I'm gonna go to Dynamite. I'll I'll be seeing him in a couple of days. The bully. You ready? King. No. You you prepping ahead of time? You gonna watch some gloves? <sighs> Dude, I'm bummed. I want I meant to buy the sting gloves at full full gear. Mm-hmm. I didn't I forgot. Mm. They should be giving them to me at this point. What the fuck? <laughs> um, can you guys weigh in on your thoughts on the new trend of pits doing weird stuff just to try to go viral online? Yeah, that sucks. I fucking hate it. The show, like if you look at 
and 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 this is very old old man of me, you know. It's but not. if you look at videos of like CB's shows, and like old like fucking even ninety like any Hatebreed show or like whatever, like the band is the focus. The yeah. pit is the reaction. Yeah. Not the other way around. Right. The shit is fucking stupid. Stage diving started because people would try to get on stage, sing along, and then jump off before the bouncer could catch them. Right. Not to do a backflip. Well, I love a backflip. What, but but you know that's what not I'm the same as like, people like doing the row, like doing the fucking. Like, oh, but that dude, <laughs> I saw that the other that's day. That's some. That's like, but they, like the band asks for that. Okay. That's well, outside different. of the band asking for that yeah, and yeah, the yeah, one yeah. video you're talking about. Yeah. 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 That's like some some fucking I don't know what's the what's the smallest village you can think village you can think of in Germany. Alshafen. Yeah, Alshafen. That's yeah. where they do the, that. Now it's or, happening in Topeka. You're telling me? Yeah, right. So that yeah. they can be on TikTok. Push ups in the pit are stupid. Like any like any of that stuff for you. I mean, and this we disagree on this, but I genuinely mean it. Like even when it goes to like like fighting. And just like no, I don't oh, like I don't I don't like shut it. Shut up, dude! You fucking. But like, what do you mean? like throwing like throwing garbage cans and stuff like oh, making it. See what I'm saying? But like taking the attention away from the band to me is bullshit. Well, I, to me, I look at that as this was so fucking hard that I had to throw this garbage can. So but, when I see a garbage can fly, I'm like, I'm doing a great job. When I see a guy rowing a paddle boat. <laughs> I think why well, must be boring because this guy's trying to get everybody's attention, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like the weird stuff. Kill each other. I hate the weird only. stuff. I want I want fucking manslaughter. I want murder in the second. You there's know? a there's a a live sheer terror recording where he's like, The last time we were here, there's like thirty million fights going on. Do not disappoint us. Love it. And they, and they put it I'm down with that. For it's sure. a good vibe. Uh, do spin kicks have an age limit? Yeah. Not yet. You're as a far fucking as I eight year old little boy spin kicking like a fucking loser. Excuse me? What's that? I'll kick your head off. <laughs> I know you can. With, with ease. I'm not very tall. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, even if you were. Um, I just, oh. I don't, like, I don't give a shit about spin kicks or whatever. And the people who can make them look good can make them look good for sure. But it's still, you're spin kicking. Like, yeah. it's still just, like, a funny thing. To it's not me. funny. It's very funny. It's scary. I've never been afraid of a spin kick. Not once. And I would never be afraid of hey, yours. <laughs> in the words me? of the Southern Lord guy, when Nails <laughs> told him he couldn't get a guy on the guest list, noted and remembered. <laughs> Damn. That's pretty... That's, that's pretty hard lore. lore. That's, pretty, that's pretty hard. <laughs> that's hard lore. Uh, why the fuck do all the bands who go to Australia skip on New Zealand? Sure, we're smaller, but we go harder because we're hungrier. So every single time we've ever been there, we ask about New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, it's the it's the same reason why we've never been to Ireland, which I've heard also has good shows. It's just like if a band isn't if it, if it doesn't fiscally make sense, it's not going to happen. And that's just how it how it works. You know, traveling is not free. Unfortunately, if it was. I do it all the time. We yeah, play anywhere. You guys got to remember, we're checking three guitars, merch, however the drum shit worked out, plus our actual bags. Like flying any one way is going to be five hundred bucks easily. Easy. That's just bags. And that's just bags. Yeah, that's just bags. That's not bags, the cost of tickets. Yeah. That's not the cost of getting to the airport. That's not. So all of that has to factor into the guarantee. And if if it's like. Okay, we could do that, or we could play two extra shows in Australia, not have to fly, go to the beach, and make more money. Also, flying sucks and, and flying, wrecks your body. Flying with a band is awful. Yep. Amen, brother. Uh, who wins in a pizza death match? Connecticut bar pie, New York style, Chicago deep dish. Get Chicago deep dish. I'm, I'm sad, sick of that. I, I went to went to Pequot's last night with Code Orange. They're here for, for a little while. How'd it go? I mean, the pizza was great. Pepsi products bummed me out. Ugh. You know, place has fallen. It's, it's going downhill. Dude, I'm, imagine for one second, though. I think I figured out what hell is to me. Pizza <laughs> without a Diet Coke. Yeah, yeah. Or I had Coke Dr. Service. Pepper. That's great. But it wasn't diet. 
<sighs> yeah, you know, it was still so, just like uh, that's a meal. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I that's, had I got my cows in last night. For sure. Um food was great, but I'm just like I'm over it. I'm over the deep dish for now. I, York, I have it I have it too much. I would put New York slightly above Connecticut only because there's there's like Connecticut has the uh, a beats style, you know, the New Haven style. And New York has many. And that might be blasphemous cover. I don't want to get killed. I know? put Detroit above them both. Both? Come on. I it's true. like perfect for me, dude. It's perfect. Yeah, but it's again, what I like about that's deep one dish. that's a one dimensional pie. I you know I'm a big fan. I love mm. it. It's a one dimensional pie. What is a multi dimensional pie? I would say, but the, it's not that. It's just that there's one dimension in Detroit. I sound crazy right now. Yeah, you sound very sick, and it's good because you're a real bastard man. Blow yeah, your little true. bastard nose. Here it comes. Say, say something. Oh. Um, can you hear it when I'm? I've been muting it when I blow it. Can you? Hear no, it? can't hear a thing. Oh, good. You're good. So anyway, oh. what I was saying was <laughs> Jesus. Uh, uh, but yeah, Chicago is at the bottom. Deep dish is at the agreed. bottom. Um, and, and I get what you mean, the sentiment with the Troy style, because it is. But that's the thing where I, I get to eat it a few times a year and it feels special, you know? Okay. Yeah. Fair but I, I could do a different aspect of New York slice every day of the week. Now, if you throw in Chicago tavern style, like thin crust square cut, that's where my head's at when it comes to pizza from here. It's like ultra thin. People that's, don't understand that yet, though. Right. It'll, it's, okay. it'll happen. It'll get there for sure. Yeah. And I fucking love it. What's the best hand soap to use after blowing up a bathroom? Dude, loves cherry, gritty. Oh, yeah. That stuff the, like, is crazy. The grease shit, like it's it's so you can get like axle grease That'll off of clean your hands. Skin off. Dude, that stuff smells so fucking good and feels so good to exfoliate with. I love I'll tell you what shit. I like is A, foaming. I'm a foaming hand soap, man. <laughs> B, the Bath and Body Works. <laughs> Christmas, the holiday ones. Yeah. There's like a toasted marshmallow one or something. Fuck <laughs> off. It's unbelievable. What's the, um, like Target sells it, but it's like May Mayors. Not they make way. hand soap, dish soap, and like a spray, like cleaner. Mm. They just, they had a, a fall one. One was fallen leaves. Ooh. Wow. And it smelled straight up like wet leaves. It was great. Yummy. Uh, best slash worst band shirt designs. Do we? Do we? I think we kind of talked about this? that. What were some scrap names for the podcast before Hardlore was born? Were there any? Dude, a lot of a lot of stuff with Hardlore takes very like it's like been someone, miraculous. Like someone will say something and it's just like oh well there it is. It's it's like you know like every haunt, decision that we make is a conversation that like haunt, that haunt lore was like obvious. Haunt lore was like was, well there yeah that's there, there it is. Um, hard more for hard we more did. like all the like every aspect it, every I'm, everything is I'm lowering it, which is coming dude. up on the the merch menu. I'm lowering it. Crazy. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. That's the worst shirt design. We yeah we've totally covered that right because we talked about the typo one. Yeah yeah true true true. And the Angry Birds font. <laughs> uh, yeah fucking hell. I need to know the hard lore stance on the McRib. Aren't you a fan? I'm a big fan. Big slices of onions. I'm opposed. Uh, pickles. Why is that? I don't know. I just don't think it tastes good. Mm. I wish it did. I wish I, I remember liked it. being. I would such love an, to have another thing. You know. I was such an idiot as a kid. And I thought I was like, why would you get that on a sandwich? You have to avoid the bones. Yeah. That's. I mean, that's next level stupid. Yeah, it's a dumb kid. But yeah, I. I just don't. It's just not for me. Mm. I'd rather have a Big Mac. You know. Mm. Oh, this is a good one for today. All right, hold on. Let's, uh, <laughs> have either of you brought a hometown band on tour and they embarrassed you in some way? No. No. Have I been the hometown band that embarrassed you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Probably. Um, I've so. been embarrassed by people doing the, like, being nice, basically, and being like, big fan, thanks for watching. Where it's just like, ha, 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 thank you. You know, like, I don't. To you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been embarrassed in that way, but never 
Because you're just actions. like, come on, I'm just a guy. I don't think. Yeah, yeah, but never by the actions of like a band on stage or anything. I don't think. Hmm. Yeah, I can't think of it, a, a, an anecdote that involves any of that. This is a great question from Aiden. Plays drums. Ah, Gr- friend of the cr- show. Cr- particularly prudent for today, considering how long it took you to get back to me this morning when I sent you that flyer. What time did Bo wake up today? <sighs> All right, well, let's see. Let's get the actual. Tell me what time you responded to me. Okay, you sent the flyer at one fourteen. Not, but uh, that's uh, hold not, on now. You're I gotta leaving go back. some things out. Hold on, hold on. Okay, you sent the Chris Columbus thing in die at ten fifty my time, <laughs> and then asked me for something at twelve twenty eight, mm-hmm. and I responded at one o six. Was that right when your eyes opened? That's why it was a question where I was like, oh wait, do you God. really need me to send you money? Because I like. Was you were still, like, what did you, what did you what? do? Yeah, I was still waking up. This is the greatest shit part of my life is doing this show, I think. Dude, I like to stay up late and I like to sleep late. You know, I wish you know I could, late, man. I you really know how late I, I slept on Sunday? I felt like a real piece of shit. 2.30. Holy fuck. I woke up at 2.30 and like the sun goes down two hours later. Wow. Not good. Not good. I regret That's it. extra dark. <laughs> yeah, it was really bad. It was. Uh, can you get the vocalist from End It on the pod? I would love to. Yeah. He's, very, he's a very funny guy. Okay. I think he'd do great. Yeah, we'll get him on. Uh, Cincinnati Chili. Where, where do we stand? It's fine. Like, I haven't had it in 10 years. Maddie has an episode where he makes it. I'm sure his is fucking amazing. What's the gimmick? Chocolate and cinnamon or something? I think there's cinnamon in it. I don't know if there's... Ch- yeah, there is chocolate in it. Huh. Yeah, but it's just... It sounds fucking stupid, right? I Think of the chocolate in it like like brown sugar in barbecue. Like, it's just a thing. It's not the focal point. I'm, you know? I would... I, I, here's the thing. I love a hot dog. Yeah. I've never turned my nose down to a dog. Mm-mm. So an enhanced dog, I'm open to the possibility. Enhanced dog with cheese? Yeah, right. I'm, yeah. I'm especially open to the possibility. I, I I think I owe it a, a return. Yeah, I think that's fair. Because what's the one? Like Skyline? Skyline. 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 I've had it. It's fine. You know. Yeah. This is a great question. Colin, referencing 2018 era, how the hell did Twitching Tongues integrate the octave up harmonies without anyone else singing? Ah, I had a very special pedal. Uh, what is it called? The mechanic, I think. No. Something like that. I I prepped for this. I was like, got to talk about my my pedal. Harmonist. What is it called? No, it's not a harmonist. It's it's way bigger than that. Uh, TC Helicon Voice Live Three Extreme. There it is. See, came back to me like that. <laughs> so basically, and the, the 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 microphone was the coolest part. Because it was the proprietary mic for the pedal. So I had delay on the bottom button, uh, reverb on the top button, and then there's a big button here to activate your presetting thing on your pedal. So basically, and then there's a number right here because I set each song as a preset. So I'd have the set list in order. And what you do is you set the key and like the major minor. So if I'm, so let's say it's kill for you, yep. C sharp, uh, mate minor, I think. I don't know. I don't know fucking shit about keys. Yeah. yeah. But uh, when I hold this, it gives me a C sharp minor perfect harmony of whatever I'm singing. Whatever, whatever you're I, singing yeah. in the key of, yes. gotcha. So it's like, it knows which key you are, so it knows kind of where to put it. Yeah. Or you can do an octave. So there's a couple songs where I, there's no really harmonies, but there's octaves. So like, uh, yeah, that was all with this pedal, and I can only do it at certain venues because it had a ground issue at like uh, smaller ones. Yeah, the sixty and, cycle. And sometimes you're too close to everybody on stage. It's an active microphone, right? So it's picking up everything. Uh, but yeah, that was my secret for a while, and it was really, I felt unique doing it. Dude, it and, was unique because Code wasn't doing it yet. Mm-hmm. Um, we 
do some minor minor vocal stuff live and we would always just have the sound guy do it. like so it was unique in that i was doing, it, doing all. it yeah it was all you right and you couldn't tell i was here i was so while you're you see this right yeah. in front of you but back here my thumb is out and i'm controlling the microphone like a video game yeah while we're playing like I'm, i know that the preset the next preset is this button okay uh fucking world war fives is this song so i gotta go to five here and do the, the ooh, ooh, ooh. That's the yeah. thing. So you set the tempo a little bit too so that the delay is at least close to where you want it. Very so smart. I, the gaining purpose one, the da 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 I know uh, I hit the delay before that and then hit the ooh and then turn it off. But there were some crazy mishaps. Really? Because like, there's gnarly shit on there. So if you step on something wrong, you're a Cylon from... Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, all along I found that I remember <laughs> uh, Sean the Butcher was at Starland Ballroom when we played there. New Jersey. And I botched a button. And then he never talked about us or posted us again. <laughs> so when the God's Hate record comes out, I was like, this is going to be terrible. Sean the Butcher's not going to like us. He hates, he hates, the guy hates me. Uh, so. I thought that was real. Um, it's not. <laughs> That's hilarious. He's been very helpful. Uh, since this is episode XXX, what bands turned you on to Straight Edge? And what bands solidified you claiming Edge? And what are some current Straight Edge bands that you really like slash think people should know about? Um, it's really funny, but AFI was one. Wow. Yeah, because, well, Davey was pretty vocally straight edge you know right. and like is wearing the straight edge force thing on the a fire inside ep of course um and then believe it or not anti-flag because two <laughs> of them two of them are straight edge or were at the time wow and there were songs that were like what do you mean you guys don't drink you gotta start drinking where they're like making fun of people what people say to them and it was like kind of cool to me but then when i actually discovered like that it was like a thing and not just like a thing you yeah. know, um, one of the first things I found was the 10 yard fight demo <laughs> and there's proud to be straight. And that yeah. was like one of the first songs that I heard. And then it was very quickly youth. It's day gorilla biscuits mm -hmm. turning point. Mine was just earth crisis. Yeah. And you know, what's funny. Never found earth crisis until much, much later. Interesting. It was all youth crew. It was, it was, I think, I mean, for a lot of people, it was one or the other, you know, the, the yeah. floor, floor yeah. punch versus earth crisis thing is, yeah. uh, exists to this day. But I was, I was definitely an earth crisis guy. Very young. T I'm talking like 11, 12. Yeah, I was, I was 12 fire, you know? when I found out about it. I started calling myself straight edge at 13. My 14th so, birthday, I was straight edge. So it's been 22 years for me. Wow. S 17. Yeah. For me. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. It, 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 I, I think everybody kind of goes in, at least from what I've observed, is like when you first find out about it, you're really passionate about it. And then you get like five years under your belt and you're kind of like a snob. You're yeah. kind of you're kind of a dick. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, 10, 15 years, you're kind of like, yeah, this is just, this is just how I am, man. It's just my shit, and, man. And now, now that I'm 20, I don't even fucking think about it. It's yeah. just like, yeah, Every I'm going to wear pants today. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Amen, brother. It is truly the most effortless part of my life. Never think about it. Yeah. I, I will <laughs> like, be straight edge until I, until I do crack or heroin. Right. Yeah. Crack or heroin. To die. You know, like that's the point. That's yeah. why I'm doing it. Um, what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Saw you play at Union Transfer in Philly with Ghostman and Code Orange. I thought it was an amazing show, but what are you and a Bo's opinions on touring with rap acts? Dude, our Ghostman tour was fucking awesome. Yeah, do it in a heartbeat. His whole crew are hardcore dudes. Like, everyone. Sher Sherwin's the TM. Wow. Um, He was cool as fuck. All the, the kids who were with them, or like, who, rather, who came to the shows were like, mystified that like a full band we were the only full band yeah it was ghost main lil tracy and then I mean, nobody opened. at that going nobody paying to see that has ever seen a thing like arms away yeah it, i would it, do yeah. this in a fucking heartbeat yeah it was it was awesome um we did really good on merch you're playing real venues so you're playing real sound systems real led screens so you can have your logo Bro, up or whatever like code orange just played the forum you know 
Yeah. I'm want to play. I would love to play the four. Yeah, right. That means opening for fucking Jizza. Oh no. Uh, yeah. You oh know? no. Yeah. I would I'm love not that. into. I'm not into hip hop personally. I will say, some of the ghost means a thing happens where you tour with the band, and by the end of the tour, you're like, you know what, man? <laughs> like, I know. I know every song. I know all these songs, and they're pretty good. You Wisdom know, like, and chains. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can't play three shows without, with them without knowing every song after. Um, but with Ghostbane, he did a lot of like visual components and like shit with the videos that would match up with the, and it was just like, it was a very cool way to perform and they would wear different shit every night. They had like five different outfits that were all in theme and they would change every night and like different stuff would happen. It was just like a cool, like, Oh wow. I hadn't thought about that kind of a thing, you know, but I had a blast. We, we would do it again for sure. Uh, Putney and Taylor aside, who do you guys think are the best or most exciting producers currently working in hardcore? Fucking uh, Arthur. I think the homie. I think the homie Arthur is doing. I mean that <laughs> that Eternal Champion record like really fucked me up when that came out. Like I love that record. Uh, who's out there? Arthur, Will Yip, uh, the homie Ryan from Arizona. Uh, who else? I think uh, Bricktop Annie Nelson has of course, co- consistently a done a, an yeah, excellent yeah. job. Uh, the guy producing all those AEW songs, that guy's good. That's me. Okay. <laughs> uh, currently, we're in hardcore, though. Uh, who else is recording stuff? Who's out there? I really don't know. A lot of people... Like, I really know, like, Randy, who works under uh, Putney, has been doing a lot. Mm. But he's kind of, like, on his own. Sure. Uh, he's been doing a lot. But, like, a lot of a lot of anyone who I talk to who's like, oh, yeah, we're recording, it's always One your brother, guys. Yeah. Bricktop, or some someone out of, you know, graphic nature. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is the funniest, cringiest, most desperate thing you've seen a local band do? I mean, you have that answer all right off the bat from the past Hardlore episode. What, what was it? Remind me. Treated? The Treated Band. Oh, right? dude. Oh, Treated! <laughs> it's probably that That band, was man. fucking... Um, one time, <laughs> when we were really young, uh, a, another friend's band who was, like, way more metalcore and was playing, like, an actual hardcore show, they opened, and... At the end of their set, they were doing the awkward thing of like, oh, maybe we'll play one more kind of a thing, you know? And our one friend, this guy, Nick, he went, hey, who wants to hear Firestorm? And one of the like scene elders, like a guy who like did my first tattoos, Mm -hmm. sang for like one of the first hardcore bands I ever heard, very loudly went, no one. Wow. (laughs) And they didn't play it. (laughs) And that was it. And it was fucking yeah, you know, I mean, you don't come back from that. No, I will say the entire two thousands whiskey a go go pay to play situation oh, was that, was dark, just pure exploitation. Dark times. Uh, somebody will remind me of the name of the. There was a production company. I think I don't think it, I don't want to say the wrong one because I don't want to yeah, offend right, the right. wrong guy. Yeah. Uh, what was the fucking name? I was just talking about it. But anyway, they messaged every band like, hey, you guys are killing it. I want to have you open this show. Just sell 100 tickets. Dude, I have a really here's, – here's some hard lore. Hit me. Do you remember a long time ago there was a video after TUI got done playing Party in the USA, Miley Cyrus? Yeah. You remember that video, right? They were in Atlanta, yeah. right? It was like TUI after, Foundation. No, it was after the Believe video shoot, right? Sure. I thought it was in Atlanta, but I could be getting it wrong. Shortly thereafter was a rain fest where we like our first time being up there. And after the last set of the day of the fest, someone put on that song and the, the locals were like redoing the video, like the viral video. And I remember Thomas from Foundation literally just went, Atlanta, <laughs> like sternly. And like, like, like the people, because the people were there. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. like 
TUI had played that day. So like yeah, people yeah. were there who were there at the original video and like it, there were people who were like trying like I, I don't know. People were trying to recreate a viral video. They were they were continuing the bit much like some do with Yes. And it was with our show. Br- it was brutal to watch. Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> it was brutal. What can you do, you know? Brain fest. Whew, what a great I watched. Era. That was a good era. Best Troy Corps record ever. I mean, it's Take My Soul, Give Me Grave, right? It's all you, brother. It's Dying Breed, Take My Soul, Give Me Grave. Or Stigmata Hymns. Or I, I, So I don't really know a whole lot about that genre. However, I do like Stigmata. And Hymns would be the one I would pick. Uh, section 8, Nine Ways to Say I Love You would probably be number three for me. Those are my top three. Favorite hardcore band from each continent. Oh, that's fun. South America, Sepultura. Of course. Uh, I like I love I like the idea of calling them a hardcore band cuz like ethically they absolutely are. Absolutely. 100%. To this day, Max and Igor, friend or actual friend of the show. Actual friend of the show, yeah, Igor yeah. Cavalera. I'm not making yeah. that up. Yep. Uh they go so far out of their ways to put on for new things. So yeah, they're a hardcore band. Incredible. Um, Europe is kickback, right? I I might honestly say Rise and Fall. Rise and Fall was was I think, like I feel like even Rise and Fall would be like you're sh- you're full of shit. Yeah, mate. yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. But like I genuinely like Into Oblivion was like scene changing. Scene yeah, I changing like it for me. I like it is what I can say about it. Kickback is like one of my favorite bands. Yeah, uh, not. Mm. Yeah, I think you're, but you're, that's just you not knowing. It's not because. No, no, no. It's, it's me having heard everything. Uh, I, I can't even say. Um, Africa, the, the I don't think stuff? I know. What? Africa, my favorite band from Africa is, is uh, Have Heart. <laughs> yeah, I saw the them. Saw a video of them playing once. They rock. Um, Australia is obviously Speed. Um, so I've got, I don't know. I mean, Mind Snare is, incre- is like the legacy act that I think is the best. Yeah, yeah. Speed right now is just carrying the torch because it's like the f- the first thing that truly got over everywhere. Yeah, shout out to I Exist, man, dude. That whole anybody group- you ask about I Exist, they're like, oh my, love them, love those cunts, ripping. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Aaron, oh, I love that man, the best man ever. And uh, Asia, Palm, <laughs> like, yeah, no, uh, you like like no, Japanese hardcore. I, I love Japanese hardcore. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure um, you know more than I do. I mean, to like grand scheme, it's probably Gizm, oh. but Judgment is my like the one I go back to the most. There's a, a a story I know of before I was even around in like Chicago hardcore. Someone, a band was touring. Someone had like a bootleg Gizm either yeah. patch or a. You've told it on here before. Have I? The kill you, one. No. Oh. Well, no. Hit me. No, I don't. Is that was know. it that? I don't know. I don't remember the story now. Oh. Uh, but a, a, a guy was touring with them who was from Japan who barely spoke English, and he saw that one day and was just like, mm-hmm. like, you shouldn't have that. I, I've got to raise up a point from last week, just so you know. Okay. You said the story about Baroness and Lars. Yeah. Confirmed untrue. <laughs> well, but it, it may have been a different band. It's just not Baroness, but it happened. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It may have been... I, I said multiple times I may oh, okay. have the band wrong. Okay. So if, if maybe if you paid fucking attention for once. No, no. It's not, somebody told me like, hey, I just asked Baroness about this. It's not true. Okay. <laughs> it was it was another band at that well, level. One of those Metallica. types of bands that toured with Paul not Paul Bear, but yeah, one, a, a band. Did Paul Bear tour with Metallica? I, I, I that's why I said probably not. That'd be sick. Um, but it was a band in that world. For sure I know that that happened. Or at least I definitely heard the story. Uh, will any of your respective? Oh wait, the continents, Asia. Yeah, yeah, Asia. South Africa, Antarctica. <laughs> Metallica played. There you go, it's Metallica. So it's Metallica is my favorite hardcore band from Antarctica. Uh, for sure. The U.S. Favorite hardcore band from here. Yeah. What's your favorite hardcore band from North America that isn't from the United States? No warning is the answer. Uh, it's probably no warning. Yet. I mean. Yeah. They just, they did it, you know. They just did it. 
It's, it's kind of like, yeah. I, I love Star Trek Survive. Genuinely. Me too. I love uh, it so absolutely. Much. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, what's left? How many continents are there? Is that what all? Is it? Yeah, we got Europe. It, well, who do who do we say for? Um, I said rise and fall. You said kickback. Kickback. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. That's it. That's seven. Okay, we did it. We're, we know the world. <laughs> we know Metallica from Antarctica and yeah. Half Heart from Africa. The Bay Area, Antarctica. You can only choose one typo or only living witness. I mean, it's typo, right? It's typo easy. Only living witness has two incredible records. Yeah, typo Ty- has six unlimited. <laughs> that you hear new things every time. That is actually very true. That's a band that you can revisit constantly it's and something. pick up on stuff. Yep, it's crazy. Yep. Uh, what do frequent touring acts do with their housing during tour? Sublet break leases month to month. How Man. funny is like people like people from New York who are like need a sublet for three months. Is there like a and I'm I mean this lovingly and respectfully. Yeah. Is there a more privileged thing to do in like in the world? I, I just can't even like what do you what do you yeah. mean? What do you mean? Where do you put your stuff? Like do no, they, they live? They have they're with your stuff. They live with your stuff. They live so they sleep on your bed? Yeah, yeah. They sublet get, it from you. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. That's weird. It's like, hey, I'm going to go on vacation for three months. So this is why in that, er- in that earlier question, why I said don't quit your job. Yeah. You know, work. Dude, I, I would fucking, I'd get dates off. Wh- what's the expression? Hook, crook, or steal? <laughs> like, hook or like by, by, by crook. <laughs> <laughs> Waffle House. Hooker steel, I'm going. <laughs> I'm paying I, my rent. I would do anything I could to get the dates off, like mm-hmm. no matter what. And um, having a roommate or living with a significant other definitely helps. Um, or start a, a podcast and make money. No, I don't know. I, I, I don't. I've always been able to, to, to make it work. And you just make the number one priority always to pay rent. Absolutely. Uh, naughtiness in the pit memories, either, either done yourself or witnessed. You've been a naughty boy. I'm not a very naughty, been a naughty guy. Boy. There was one time and I'm hesitant to say this, Yeah, but I did apologize. You know, one time ringworm was playing birth is pain and nobody was watching the entire time. It was on your tour at the hi hat. Yeah. yeah. That was a great show. It was a great show. I parallel parked the van with the trailer outside of the show. First try. Nice. In front of like a In Highland people. Park, there's a lot of people there. I felt so cool. Yeah. Go on. Uh, Ring Worms playing Birth is Pain. I'm going off. Yeah. Just like full on, full naughty boy, not a care in the world. And this boyfriend, this girl's boyfriend like moves behind her. And I oh, just no. absolutely you just clobbered her. She caught a, a red wing in a way that nobody ever has before, you know? Yeah. To the point where I was like, I'm so sorry. And, <laughs> and Josiah, ugh, I don't, I'm getting, I'm getting <laughs> crazy. Here. But I'm pretty sure Josiah uh, from Criminal Instinct to the guy was like, that was pretty fucked up, man. <laughs> like what he did, man. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. One time during the intro, dude, this is a good one. One time during the birth is pain intro, the elder Morrissey, Chris, Andrew's the older Santa. brother. Yeah. Yeah. Victory the, Records, Monster Victory Santa. Records, Monster Santa um, was doing like the, the stage mosh, you mm-hmm. know, where like hands are on the stage. Of course. And you're pitting. Unplugged the guitar from the tuner because <laughs> the tuner was up front. And I just heard, uh, dude, go, ah, 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 damn it. <laughs> That's good. Uh, what's a riff another band has that you wish you wrote? <laughs> Unbelievable. That's way up there. Uh, hey, take Master Killer, put it on your turntable, throw the fucking needle. You'll find a riff that I wish I yeah. I'll tell you another one. 
Unreal. And or how about how about hit me dude um I've ripped that off ten times, and then and like, I've played it backwards. I've done the first part both. I've stolen it so many times. The great part about about the uh, how long can you last in the frozen water batch? The best part about that is you think it's oh one oh one oh one four no 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 no, but it's not. It's oh oh one oh three six and it's it like broke a mold in my brain once I learned that whole part out. But because it's like a, it's like a key change inside of a, this yes. part that doesn't where you were like why would they do that and then it's, it's like a, then they do it exactly it's like a full this, step key change. That's good uh, shit. Slayer have dude. One thing I want to talk about how do we and this is sensitive. Yeah. Is it? You brought up you brought up Pantera. I did. How do we separate artist from person? You know what I mean? <sighs> yeah, it's tough to do. I mean, we're talking about Morrissey, you know? Yeah, yeah. Every ist and every ism thrown, you know? Yeah. yeah His yeah, way yeah. to stay. Uh, and and I, I think Pantera definitely couldn't exist today. No. You know, no, and uh, I feel guilty sometimes yeah. admitting that like I, but then like, but then the Abbots were so sick. Yeah. Right. The Abbots were so cool. And like, to me, those are their songs. But, but Dime you know? playing on the fucking, the flag guitar. Yeah. You know, and he, pro- I mean, he'd probably change his stance on that now. I would imagine. Yeah. I would yeah. hope. You know, I would hope. Yeah, there's yeah. there's there's certain guys that I'm not glad that obviously they that didn't live to disappoint. Like Pete Steele never lived to disappoint me. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he disappointed yeah. people for sure. He disappointed people for sure. Yeah, and I'm yeah. and I'm 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 sure he's always the he's a contrarian. You know. Yeah. So yeah. the the first Pete Steele like making MAGA post would have crushed me. You know. Yes, which and definitely would have happened. It, it could have happened. It just as happened. a just as a like I want to disagree with the general public type thing, you know? Right. Or like did I have I know I've said this before, but it's like probably likely that Hetfield voted for Trump. <sighs> if you're crazy. a multi multi millionaire musician, they you're going to vote huh? for the yeah, Think about it. Yeah. They all did. And I I there was an interview where Hetfield was asked and his response was I really don't like to talk about that kind of thing. Which you would only really say if you know what I'm saying. But then, but no matter what he says, he's alienating somebody. Because is there I mean, is there a band to- that that racist guys like more than Metallica? You know, other than maybe Pantera and Slayer. <laughs> Shit. There's a there's a new big four, and it's it's uh, hate breed screwdriver. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> hate breed. <laughs> um, and, but it's like, and it's. Because Hatebreed fights it every chance they get. You know? Yeah, yeah. I saw the video of the of them kicking out a Nazi the other night. They just go, hey, get the fuck out. Get we out don't here. like you. That's the way. I mean, it's the way it should be. Yeah, I. Uh, it's it's like Marilyn Manson is a great example. I don't give a shit about Mar- Marilyn Manson musically. I used to love him as a figure because thought he, I thought he was a smart, well spoken contrarian who had a lot of views that I agreed upon. You know, or agreed with rather, and then you know, obviously, He's comes out that he was like a real piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. How I I find there's nothing for there me to separate. You know, I don't think that's. <laughs> Did the you same. just forget how to speak? Yeah, I'm fucked up. There's nothing for me to separate there. I don't need to. You know, because you were never like a music a Maryland Yeah, I don't music give a guy. shit. Yeah, and it's and Pantera is different because like Marilyn Manson is the guy. Is Marilyn the guy? Manson. Yeah, you're right. Pantera fills the singer over. The Abbott's songs to me. 
Domination so, is such an insane song. Come on, dude. He, I mean, that ruined like the open note breakdown for everybody. Because you're never gonna, you're never gonna do a better one. It's crazy. Was there ever a tour that you were offered that you had to turn down, that, yeah. that you regretted? Of course. I got asked to play drums for Yellow Card for a Warped Tour one time. Dun, 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 dun. I had to turn it down. I, I, to this day, I, it like devastates me to think about it. Um, I can't. I don't know if I can. I remember you guys almost turned down a tour with us to do a dancing tour. Do you remember that? That was like <sighs> in the air. Yeah, you remember that? That would have been fucking awesome. I mean, obviously uh, not 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 doing a tour with you. Like, but I think that, it was. I'm pretty sure it was the disharmonic it, rust. Tour. I think it was. So maybe <laughs> that would have been better. But it was like that was one of the pitches to us at first. Was like, yeah, we can get you on a tour with Danzig, you know? And like that's perfect. And it was I don't remember who got it instead of us, but it was like some uh, I think pure it was can I think it was cancer bats. Oh I I genuinely believe I remember that being the case. We got some words to, to speak <laughs> there, cancer bats. Uh, uh, I can't think of it, uh, of a tour like off the top of my head, but like there's stuff that happens all the time that when touring cycles are going, there's offers that are coming in a lot that you just can't do. Yeah. Uh, best time you had filling in for a band on tour. Ringworm let me play House of Hell with them a couple That's nights. That's sick as fuck. And dude. House of Hell. Yeah, that's Dude, a good shit. Amazing. That you, was man. just fun. And like, I love Ringworm is genuinely one of my favorite hardcore bands of mm -hmm. all time. And uh, told them that I love that song, specifically the Terror Split version Terror Split of that version, song. Yeah, for sure. Not the one that's on uh, Justice. <sighs> Dude, that Terror Split. Oh, it's unbelievable. Imagine getting to do a split with Ringworm. Especially in that at that in that era at that time, because like Terror had, had been a band for a year and a half, you know, or something. And they put on the fucking um, is it out of my face? What what's the song? Not the uh, not the song. Fuck everything oh, and yeah. everybody. Yeah. Which on that it's a little slower than it was on One with the Underdogs, so it feels like an industrial song. My favorite feeling thing I ever got to do was play drums for Stigmata at this is hardcore. I watched the whole thing from right behind you. It was very special. Um, that was awesome. We had just taken them on tour. We did the, or I guess it was almost a year ago. Fuck. Uh, we brought them to California for the In Love There's No Law shows. Had to be way more than a year ago. No, it was 2014. This is hardcore 2014, and those shows were like October 2013. Oh, I thought you meant a year ago from now. So, no, 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 no. Sorry, my bad, my bad. Uh, they asked Taylor... And Taylor's kind of historically not a great, like, filler in her. Mm. And I, like, play those songs recreationally, you know? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'll just play the record start to finish for fun. And Bittner was, like, a big influence on me drum-wise. So Taylor was like, just ask Colin. And they were like, he plays drums? That's crazy. <laughs> uh, and then I, within, like, an hour, sent them a YouTube video of me just playing the record start to finish. Uh, so they said yes. We did not practice, right? Together as a band, right? Right. So that's why when you watch the video, there's one error. There's a big error in the set, and it wasn't my fault. Because yep. live they do this thing with this crash hit on the die a slow hot death motherfucker, <laughs> and on the record there's no crash hit. He just starts singing. So they're so, and I can't hear vocals, and he keeps looking at me and going crash, because it goes. So I thought it was that crash that they were waiting on, and that he had already done the die a slow hard death. But gotcha, because he can't hear vocals, right? But that was the best. But I remember him saying like, "It's all right, kid." After and that was and it was not or it was I I was all right, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that wasn't on me. But I remember that. That's right. That was cool. That was fun to watch. It was very very special. That was that day. It was kind. Of, it was like being in Goodfellas for a day, where in the beginning when he's getting introduced to all the guys, yeah, because yeah. I got introduced to a guy named Five Head, and they said this is Five Head on the count of the five tattooed on his head, and he has a five <laughs> tattooed on his head, and he just went, "How you doing?" 
<laughs> and it was like a literal, just like Goodfellas moment. It was awesome. Dude, is there a cooler photo than the Stigmata Marauder split? There is not. Like of the two bands, like that's it. There is not. To the point where we may have just recreated it with a band in New York this past weekend. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. I mean, that, that makes perfect sense. Very cool. It does. Uh, that was a little serendipitous there. It was. It was, it was good timing there, Bowen. It's almost like I filled you in, but I didn't. Really uh, did. Fruit Loops or Lucky Charms? Lucky Charms. Lucky fucking Charms all day, dude. Dude, let's do, let's do top three, uh, top five cereals. Easy. Rice Krispie Treats, number yeah, one. Yeah, the treat, but you can't even find them. Yeah, they're, they're target, they were Target exclusive for a while, but I think they're just gone again. Yeah. Uh, what well, Rice Krispie Treats, number one. Waffle Crisp, number two. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, number three. Uh, Lucky Charms, number four, maybe? Respect. And I'll straight up, I'll give you the Honey Nut Cheerio, number five. I'm going to go Cinnamon Toast, number one. Number one, okay. It's, come on, you know. Uh, but I get those other two are not available. But they're like, those, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Rice Krispie Treats was one of the things I ate as a kid where I was like, okay, this food is the is my thing. I like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be fat and eat more of this. Waffle crisp, I've never eaten less than one box at a time. <laughs> That's how I am with cinnamon toast crunch. You can't keep it around. No fucking way. Family So my, my, my fattest era, 2017, 2018, was kicked started by Rice Krispie Treats becoming available at Target once again. I bought 10 boxes, brother. I had a, hev- a half a box every morning. Until and then re, and then when I finished those ten, guess what I did? Bought more. Bought another ten. Oh my god! I did this for th- th- three months, of half a box every morning. Oh my god! <laughs> it was fucking. It was incredible. Right. Best cinnamon time toast, of my life. Cinnamon toast crunch number one. Cinnamon life. Oh, number two. Huge. I love life. I, I know Don Vargas is listening right now. Shitting. He's a he's a serial fanatic. Oh, yeah? He's shitting his little knickers, his big old pants. Listen to this. <laughs> Cinnamon uh, Life, number two. Number three, Lucky Charms. Love okay. Lucky Charms. Number four, I'm going to go real, real basic, Corn Pops. Interesting. You got to have them? I love them. You got to have your pops? I just I got to have my pops. Okay. Isn't it funny? There's like almost no bad cereal. And then number five, as an honorary mention, Raisin Bran Crunch. Really? You're not, al- you're not alone in that, but that's just not my shit. I just, you know? I just love it. It's just, it's. Got I wish there I was want. a cereal I could eat without feeling like a piece of shit. Yeah, just doesn't exist. And if it does, it's not good. It's not good. Yeah, yeah. Sad. Love, Lowest and lower are one of the underdogs. Honestly, maybe one with the underdogs. I think it, it has. It, 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 maybe it's a little sacrilegious to say, but like. Lowest is more fast, mm-hmm. and I don't necessarily want that. I want. It's, I mean, more. which it's more. It's a more like exciting, energetic record. But one for the underdogs is like, it's like it's. I would I would say it's like a victim in pain, one voice type mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. evolution. Mm-hmm. And it was fat, but it was much faster. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one with the underdogs. I remember the day it came out. I remember buying the CD from Best Buy, maybe. Good for them. Uh, honestly, maybe, yeah. maybe hot topic. Some of the best hardcore songs that not only like are have ever been written, but will ever be written. Yeah, um, the actual the title track, first song, unbelievable opener, unbelievable pit park. Yeah, the the chorus has the fast triplet, like it, it does it all for me. Yeah. The With, guest vocals on "Spit My Rage." Yeah, brother. Yeah. Those are, there's some lore behind those that I'm not allowed to tell. But. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Most insane local opener behavior you've witnessed? Huh. Wildest show drip you've ever seen? Band member or, or attendee? Wow. I'm just going to say Josh Holden, bass player of American Nightmare, is, is the OG double RL Ralph Lauren fashion guy. So... We didn't talk to American Nightmare at Furnace Fest. I never got to share this story. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, band members in AOL instant messenger screen names would just get like circulated. Yeah. 
Like, oh, here's this guy from this band. This is his screen name. Okay. Yeah, I punish Joe Hardcore all the time. So I got Josh from American Nightmare. I also got Busky, which is hilarious. Oh, I, was, I used to punish Busky all the time. I was really into The Promise. Yeah. So I was like, oh, you know, but whatever. I didn't talk to him much, but I talked to Josh. And of, of, it was the worst, dude. What do you think I asked about? Oh, Out of no. any? Th- yes. You did not. Yes, I did. I was fucking 13, 14. So I asked about Wes's hand, uh-huh. and Josh said, I don't know, man. He doesn't really talk about it. Like, handled it the most diplomatically. Now, here's the best part. And I probably wouldn't have said this. Well, maybe I would have at Furnace Fest because it's like I was an embarrassing little kid. Fast forward maybe a year, and my first hardcore show was them playing the fireside. All right. I didn't know how stage diving really worked. I didn't know how hardcore shows worked, but I knew every word to American Nightmare because I was obsessed right. at the time. So I just kneeled on stage. And anytime Wes came stage right, I would grab that motherfucker and like grab the, like forcefully take the mic. I was, terrible. and you know, they talked about you for a week. But well, here's the best part, dude. The show ends. Oh, right. Yes. I have heard this. The show ends and everyone leaves. And I go, Josh, it's Bo. And you could kind of see him put it all together and, be like, and go, oh. like, of course, this is that kid. Yeah. Can you hear Metallica? Yeah, I fucking hear him. Uh, That's my boy. Uh, That's my boy. Sick fuck. But yeah, um, that was that was embarrassing. That's brutal. They had some drip. They were drip. They were they were one like of them. back at back in the day. Yeah. It's true. Wes, no, like Josh was yeah. like a vintage clothes like curator, and that's and now he's it's his job. I mean, Martine has with like Lion Crew, but that's like he was always five years ahead of the curve. Yeah, yeah. But he, to that's this just, day, that's just um, him playing yeah, into that is correct. Yeah. Uh, airport store insanity stories flying with gear with gear. Colin. Sometimes I think about things when I'm like on my little walk to get coffee. I'm like, I got to talk about this tonight. We've never talked about it. And then I forget. And then something triggers it. So this is perfect. Yeah. You just flew to and from Newark. Yeah. Gear made it. Safe and sound. What did you Isn't it funny when like why? Who chooses when what days my items are oversized or not? There's nothing, dude. There's no rhyme or reason. It's just that sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. It's their fucking attitude. You know what's Um, awesome? What? JetBlue emails you when your items make it on the plane. That's nice. So if they don't make it, there's like a heads up. Like, hey, your items didn't make it on. My question or my, my topic, my PSA. Give it to me. Everyone's at the baggage claim. And everyone crowds the fucking belt. Oh, fuck off. Guys, just stand back 10 feet, and when you see it, go and get it. It's crazy. The, the... There needs to be a line. It's always... cross this line. Yeah. It's always one and the same, because it, it immediately before this is when everyone stands up when the plane lands, which also just drives me fucking insane. Oh, man, I want to kill. The other day, when, when I flew to New York, I was in an exit row. This is something I don't understand. Okay. I love the exit row. I'll pay extra for it every time. Yep. Same, I have same. to get it. Same. You know, I'm a long-legged, pissed-off son I, of a I, bitch, you know? I'm not, I'm not, and I just, like, prefer it. The exit row cabin space is where the flight attendants generally put their stuff. Okay. The one compartment where the people sitting there have to put their shit somewhere. Mm-hmm. Is where you put your stuff? Right. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. So I had to go way back to put my shit in there. So I'm fuming, obviously. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And going back when the flight lands to like try to pick up, get my stuff. Oh my God. You're just numero. Oh, at that point, I'm like, if you're in front of me, I'm going to kill you. You know? Like, just, there's no reason you need to be standing unless you're doing exactly what I'm doing. Planes in Asia have an exit at the back and front. Can you imagine? No. Like, don't have to wait for shit. Life would be so much simpler. There's just... 
flying probably our, our most insane thing. The first time Harm's Way went to Europe. And we had called Foundation and Expire at the time because they were like of our level sure. having toured Europe a bunch. Yeah. Like, yo, we're bringing all this merch, which that's strike number one. Yeah, Don't fly with merch if you it. can avoid it. Print it. There were some things that they just can't print there. I, I'm totally, sure that's totally. changed. You know? Of course. And like, obviously, I'm, I'm saying if avoidable, don't fly with merch. Yeah. But we read on the on the TSA site that like any like the biggest bag still has to conform to X, Y, and Z and has to be under a specific weight. So James and I are at his parents' house. And we're dividing all of our merch up to f- be under 40 pounds mm-hmm. and then folding bags and using like rope to tie it so that it fits these dimensions that it says on the fucking website. Wow. But that also means that our what should have been maybe two and a half, three bags of army bags of merch is now seven. Dying. So we get to o, we get to O'Hare. Rot. We're talking to the guy. We're talking to the guy from Lufthansa, and he's like, "Why'd you do it like that?" And we were like, "What do you mean?" Well, the site says he's like, "You should just open these up and put them all in there. You'll save half your money." <laughs> and we were just like, "Yeah, we could do that." And he was like, "Yeah, go ahead." It's just the guy. It depends on the it's, fucking it, guy. There's I have no real rules. We have you know how many times we've had to pull up the gate check law? Yeah, yeah. To a motherfucker TSA working the law. thing, dude. We have gotten out of paying eight hundred dollars to check all of our shit just because we're like goofy and the lady likes us. One hundred percent. If you have a, the, a hint of bad vibes, oh my god, you're if, you're fucked. If there's ever a time, dude. Two things about airports. Be nice to everyone, and it literally always pays off. Yeah. But also, while being nice, you can be stern. When well, you, if you know if you if you know if you're nice and you know what you're doing, yes, you can get a lot done. There was a there was so um, uh, ex girlfriend and I were taking a trip to Europe. We didn't know about the you had to have a recent COVID test to get into Portugal, which we had a layover. Blah 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 blah. So we got to O'Hare and they're like, oh, you guys don't have this. Like, you can't. Uh, and the next flight for you guys is going to be blah, 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 three days later. Hotel's already paid for. All this shit's yeah. already paid for. So I, I just very firmly but politely said, well, we're not going to do that. So we need to find like another, like anywhere else in the States where we can go get a test and then be there tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And I was just really persistent. And she was like, okay, I'll see. Oh, you know what? There is something at Newark, coincidentally. Yeah. Like, okay, we'll figure, blah, blah, blah. Done. So it's just it's just a matter of being really nice. Just like well, hey, I am sorry, but there's all these moving parts that absolutely. Can't uh, Lana is an executive assistant, like pro level. Yeah, and her whole thing has just been realizing that like literally nothing is impossible. Like yeah. everybody can push a button and get something done. Yeah, you just have to ask the right questions and and try. It's and crazy. boy, guys, that works everywhere. Mm-hmm. Everywhere. That works at live events. Yep. <laughs> that that works in retail. That works with Amazon. <laughs> send the email, brother. Just, if yeah, you're scared do to do it, send the email. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Best show you've seen on an off day on the road. This is a great question, dude. Sometimes they're the best. Let me tell you, brother. Rainfest 2013. Yeah. Georgian tongues played. Left right after our set. When the pre gear was it? That era? I don't know if it was the priest year. It might have been the year after. Okay. Left right after. Drove straight to Oakland. Saw bolt thrower and autopsy. Oof. I remember the videos. It was the best thing I've ever seen. I remember the videos of you guys diving. Just. And, and dude, when we were diving, bolt thrower was having the best time. They, they, you could tell they were like, holy shit, this is sick. Like, really? it, it yeah. looked like the fucking turned inside out MTV. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, that was our goal was, like, give Bolt Thrower this, like, crazy kind of hardcore, like, old school with a K yeah, yeah. reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then security asked us to stop, and you could see them being visibly bummed. Mm-hmm. So that was special. Even knowing that they were like, ah. That was awesome. You know, yeah. it was really cool. I mean, that same year was when all of Harm's Way went and saw Bolt Thrower. At the Metro, right? At dude, the, at Reggie's, actually. Dude, $10 shirts. $10 shirts. 
What the fuck are they, they doing? They lost money. They had to yes. have lost money. Yes. Lots of money. But I Crazy. bought three shirts. <laughs> I bought them all. <laughs> you know what I mean? I bought yeah. doubles, triples yeah. in the Nova. You know, I yeah. bought them all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was incredible. I wish. <sighs> what? You can see it. Oh, can't, you wish. Can't, can't yeah. tell the both. Yeah, no, stories. you can't. You can't do that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> this is interesting. If every hardcore scene in America assembled, this is kind of a dangerous question to ask. Okay. I guess essentially which city would win in a Survivor Series tournament? Los Angeles. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> like, I, I just, it's scary, man. This is a scary question to, to, to bring it, up. It's not. It's Los Angeles. Yeah. Just I'm sheer not, numbers alone. <laughs> I'm not picking a side here. <laughs> Between who and who? I'm I'm Switzerland here, brother. Between who and who? If it's like LA, New York, Boston. Where else? Chicago, you know? No. Philly, where are the hardest I mean, guys? I mean Philly? Chicago, Philly, yeah. Atlanta for a minute. For a minute, yeah. You know. So is this like a, a Okay, so is I mean, this a like lot a, of those scary guys live in LA now, you know? Exa- exactly. But yeah. is this like a kayfabe, like wrestling thing, or is it like a actual, like MMA cities versus I think they mean like, a war, like a war. Like, like an a, actual Like well, a West Side okay. Story type scenario, you know? Wow. Did you see the thing about the Alex G. Lice outbreak? No. <laughs> it's still LA, though. That's still my answer. What's the Alex okay. G. thing? There's a lice outbreak at the Alex G. show the other day. It's disgusting. And I said that Alex G should team up with the turnstile pants shitter to find the culprit in a Silence of the Lambs type scenario, you know? <laughs> like Alex G is Clarice <laughs> and the pants shitter is Hannibal and they got to get into his psyche yeah, to, to figure break out. the psyche of the lice guy. Dr. Lecter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's fucking good. Uh, it's still LA. There's just more people. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Swiss. I'm Switzerland. You don't need to be. It's you know, population wise, it's just like sheer numbers. But yeah, some of those like Atlanta guys are killers. Some well, of those Boston guys are assassins. Man, the New York is like. The New York is New York. <laughs> yeah. Where is John Hollier in this <laughs> in this equation? I don't know. I pick where he is. I don't know. That's the winning Switzerland. Yeah. Uh, right. Bruce, Bruce LePage is listening to this right now going, what are you talking about? Oh, these fucking guy, I'm going to fucking kill these guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's a well, good question. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. Did was we get it? anything new on the Twitter? I don't think so. There were a couple late ones, but it's going to be hard to find now. Agreed. I know somebody specifically was like, you didn't answer my question. That's fucked up. So let me. Let's do a little look. A little looky look. Because I, I, I got him tagged. On mine as well. Yeah. Very, very excited about the hard lore mailbox. Oh, can't believe the mailbox. Dude. Very, very excited. And I hope. I'm happy. The hard lore. I can't. I don't know if, like, I think I made the mistake of calling it the hard lore happy meal on my tweet about it. Uh huh. Because I'm sure McDonald's searches happy meal, you know? Yeah. Like their social, social media intern will probably see our box. But are we covered in some kind of parody law? Um, Maybe Elon, not because Elon would say so. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, um, right. I think so. Um, hope so, huh? I, I I hope so. We can call it whatever the fuck we want. It doesn't really matter, I guess. It's the hard uh, meal. You know? Top. Yeah. Ooh, this is a great question. What do we miss? And poignant. Okay. Let's end what it are your with this. To- What are your top three favorite Thanksgiving Food items. Happy Thanksgiving, hard oh, universe. What a per- well, let me shout out who asked that because this is from uh, Chev, my good man Chev. Good job, Chev. Number and then one. top five Christmas movies. He says, but oh, we got to we'll save that. We'll we save, save that. that. We, we got, got an that. idea. Yeah, yeah. Number one. Now start at the bottom. What are you doing? Okay. Number yes, three. <laughs> uh, sweet potato pie. Love. Sweet potato pie. Number two, mm-hmm. 
Mashed potatoes. <laughs> I'm going to get that after every single one. And I, it's going to be the same thing when you do yours. Number one. Yeah. With a fucking gravy laden bullet. Stuffing. <laughs> Stuffing. Over tur- no turkey on your top three? Turkey is number four. Turkey is the, but think about the, eating the turkey without oh, those things. Think about brother. it. I did think- my whole life because I was a little, little baby. I didn't like sauce and stuff. Now I'm different now. Yeah, but you know the gravy is the oil that keeps the engine running for Thanksgiving. White meat or dark meat? Oh, I'll do a little of both. Okay, that's fair. Did that's you fair. see Maddie's Thanksgiving leftover thing? Unbelievable. Oh my God. The man's a genius. I gotta try it. It's the it's ground up turkey stuffing and mashed taters in like a sausage patty. Fried. Fried with an egg on top. And gravy. Ugh. Gotta try it. Um number three for me is stuffing. I love three stuffing. Is stuffing. I love stuffing. I can't believe it. Number two, real cranberry sauce. Not out of You're a can. You're real. Wow. Not out of a can. Most take, people are very specific that they, they like the can one. I, I don't mind the can, but when I've had the real stuff with the compote, it's like, oh, okay. Like, this is what it should be. It's I wish one, I liked it, man. It's one sack of the cranberries, one cup of water, one cup of sugar, reduce. And, like, that's it. It's with a little I lemon want, peel. Maybe I'll get into it this year. And then, number one, turkey. White for me? meat. Okay. Now, here's the real question. Load it up. Here's the real question. Yeah. Thanksgiving dessert is out. Oh, oh. Well, the, this is the beginning of a season for me. Yeah. And that season is pumpkin season. It's pumpkin pie season. Now, let me ask you. Ask me, brother. Warm or cold pumpkin pie? Cold. Cold. Okay. Cold pumpkin pie with the biggest scoop of vanilla ice cream you've ever seen. You go ice cream. Okay. Oh, yeah. I like I like Cool Whip in this one instance. Something about Cool Whip with a pumpkin pie is, like, perfect. I think I the know. Cool Whip to you does the same. It serves the yeah. same purpose, though. Yeah, like, yeah. a creamy thing with the pumpkin pie. To me, hot take, uh, a pie is a vessel for ice cream. Interesting. Like, that's my, that's my stance on pie. My beef is, though, if, if I were to have apple pie a la mode, I would want the apple pie to be hot. I'm not heating up a pumpkin pie. Absolutely. There, there are, There's a time and place. For mm-hmm. there's you know not it's not one size fits all. Every pie, every journey is different. Yeah. On that note, what, what other what other Thanksgiving desserts are there? Pecan pie. Oh, that's true. It's a big one. Maybe like my a, dad a choc- is a big like chocolate cream pie. Chocolate. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Love. That makes sense. I love that the Oreo crust. Ooh. Uh, oh, I just um, I love even a shitty like uh, like a Ralph's baked. Pumpkin pie. Uh, you incredible. know what I'm saying? Whole Foods, yeah, they're, Trader they're Joe's. fucking incredible. Crazy. And yeah. they just like out of a gun yeah. and they get baked, you know, but they're so fucking good. Say no more. I, I'm dying now. I need. I, I like, I was kind of not psyched for Thanksgiving because I feel so sick. Mm. And now I'm like, damn, it's Thanksgiving. I haven't been to the gym in a week, which is You're crazy. You're going to me. Texas, yeah? Yeah. You do like the full family thing? The full Monty. Yeah. <laughs> just gonna be just gonna be me and my mom this year. I'm gonna watch planes, trains, and automobiles. I don't. You're gonna watch out. Thanks Killing. No, but I have seen it. Nice tits, bitch. Are there any more Thanksgiving movies? I don't think so. Not that I know. Of. Besides, like Charlie Brown, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. If you know of any, hit us <laughs> up. Yeah. And thank you again for 31 episodes now of Hard Lore. And thank you all for the birthday wishes last week. I yes, felt it. I heard it. Uh, and if you didn't wish me one, I want you to stop what you're doing right now. Yes. Whisper it. Nine. There are almost 10,000 people have listened to that, listened or watched that last episode so far. And I don't think you got 10,000 happy birthdays. I don't think so. So I expect my just due mm-hmm. right now. Um, but yeah, I love these episodes. They're the best. They're the least pressure. But we gotta get, to we'll have somebody next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. Easy. Easy. Easy peasy. Okay, cool. All right, y'all. We love you so much. <laughs> Thank you Miss so you, much. Miss you, kiddo. Miss you so oh. much. 
Bye. Bye.